Hi, I'm making something new today. I've never made this before. All right, I've had this free pattern for, since it came out, because I thought they were kind of cute. I really don't need pattern weights, but um, I still want to make this because it looks really cute. You probably saw on the thumbnail, like what it is. It's a little pattern weight, free pattern from Grain Line Studio. I think it came out like a year ago. And hers look like little pears, which is adorable. So um, the funny thing is I'm going to be using the masks from the Ruby Star Society mask panel. So look, see, can you see this is the seam right here? That would be, and look, they even have a picture of a finished mask right there. I never used all the masks on that panel and the fabrics are so cute that I thought this is perfect. So I'm gonna cut it out here too today. So here's the little piece of um, the, pa the pattern paper here, or the pattern, oh my God, I can't talk. Um, and I'm just gonna, this is how I center things sometimes. I just put that little point there, right? Oops, should have folded it the other way. Just like this, we'll fold that, put that right there. And then I have my center and we'll, we'll cut this out in scissors. Oh my gosh, I haven't cut something out in scissors in so long. <laughs> I'll survive. <laughs> um, and then I've already fused the back with some Trico. Can you see it's kind of bright? But um, you see my little square of uh, Trico, which is just fusible interfacing, that's all. So I'm gonna look at this from this side like that. Okay, just making sure. I want this bird, I'm gonna kind of bias the bird a little bit down, you know, like that. And then as long as this line here falls inside my seam allowance, I'm good, right? So. I think this will be so cute. All right, so let's see if these scissors will cut fabric. Okay, this is okay. I'm cutting off my seam allowance though, I can tell. All right. There's a little slight angle there. Oops. All right, let's do the circle. Circles are always the hardest to cut, aren't they? So they um, suggest using those, um, like I think they're like a material you can buy that are actually weights, little weight pellets. And I don't have that, um, but I have used, well, here's my cautionary tale about using food. Like if you use rice or beans or something like that, and say your sewing area is in a place like a garage, a uh, backyard studio, a basement, anywhere that rodents might wander in. I have had friends have those things get eaten. Because <laughs> I used to have a friend that used little bean bags made with corn inside, dried corn. Um, and yeah, the mice would come in there. We were in this industrial building. So that's my cautionary tale. I'm gonna be using walnut shells. So I live in an area where walnuts are actually grown. And so this is a byproduct and they're, they're kind of heavy. So I think that'll be perfect. I have my funnel left over from last year when I was doing gift sewing and we made the neck pillows and we filled them with rice or I filled them with rice. Wow, that one of the worst days of my life. <laughs> Don't recommend, that's not for the faint of heart. So I have my little funnel. I just used this recently to make a, a draft snake for my window because the window can't shut all the way because I have a cord going through. It's a long story. Anyway, all right, so we've got our bottom here. Not bad for the little asterisk. Um, there's not a notch right here at the center, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put one. That little purple notch is one I drew. So just fold this in half and put a notch there. You're gonna want that for the little loop we're gonna put at the top. All right, so it's that. Now, you might have noticed I have a Clover bias folder out, and that's because they recommend using one. I never use these, but I just thought I would show you a trick on using these. I never pre-fold my binding, right? I don't actually have my iron set up either, so I know I'm cheating a little bit. All right, so once you get this, the binding in there, and this little slot right here, that is for feeding your fabric. So you just, that's how you get your fabric to feed in these little things. Get it so that it's folding equally on both sides, all right? Now, if you can, turn it over like this. Pin this to your ironing board, boop, just like that, all right? 
now what you can do and just position it like it might take a little bit like okay wait I'm right handed blah 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 whatever it you know you know what I mean like the, the logistics right so you've got this sitting there and then when that is attached to the iron what you can do is you can pull this and pull it gently like this while you're holding your iron and iron it just like that I don't know how you're meant to use these things they're super weird doing it like this doesn't really work that great because the um, you can't pin this down because the binding is under there, right? So you can't pin this down, otherwise your binding wouldn't be able to feed. So you have to have it flipped over in order for the binding to feed through this little hole. And as long as you keep this centered and you just kind of keep an eye on this binding being centered in this little feeder, it will fold. Like I said, I never use these things. I don't really find um, pre-folding my binding to be very helpful. For something like this, we're not actually binding. We're just trying to make a little tube. So I could actually use my loop turner, which is actually what I'm going to do <laughs> because, you know, I, I, I don't really don't want to be bothered with trying to pre-fold it and edge stitch it. So this is much longer than I need to, but we'll just make a little extra. Maybe I'll make another little pattern weight or two after this. All right, so let's turn this. And then this is going to go on top. So that, this way, when you go to pick up your pattern weights, you have a nice, a nice little handle. I really got a lot in there this time. Let's see. All right. Okay. I would iron this. And then let's see. We, we probably want this to be about, what do we think? Maybe, maybe like that tall. I'll measure that for you. This is like four inches. All right, that's four inches. All right, and I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna put it on that little notch right there and tack it down just like that. All right, and now we're going to sew this right sides together. Oh, maybe I should have biased that from one side to the other. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe put it into the left or right of your notch. That's what you want to do. Let's try it again. Let's perfect it. <laughs> okay, so there's my notch right there. Just put it to the left or right of it. And we can even just fold this right now and then stitch it in there. We need a hole though. So don't sew the whole way, right? You need a place to stuff this. So I'm gonna stop there and then I'm going to continue down here. See, this is paybacks for me, making you guys do all this binding lately. I'm gonna have to hand sew. Yep, it's true, I'm gonna have to hand sew. The, the, the whole, you know, indignity of it all. All right, how's this go? All right, so let's press the seam open. And now we're going to, there's no way, there is no way. Oh, I did this wrong. Oh, this is so interesting. I'm not a big fan when the instructions are in a blog. I'm not the best like reader of instructions to begin with. We all know this, I know this, right? But um, I just looked at it and I was like, okay, got it. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Rather than start over, you're just going to be here with me. Okay, so that means that I'm supposed to sew this together. Oh, yeah. Okay, so my bird is going to be a little bit wonky. Let's see, this is what my bird's gonna look like. Like this. It's gonna be upside down. All right, well, learn from me. <laughs> it's gonna be upside down. Darn it. All right, well, like I said, learn from me. You won't make this mistake now, right? Okay, so we're going to put this. This is where you want the notch, not the other side. You want the notch over here. Okay, 
and that makes more sense now. You wouldn't, you won't really need a notch. There is a slight dip in the, the line right here. So right there. So we're gonna put that on one side of the dip, fold it in half, I think. <laughs> all right, that makes more sense. All right, all right, all right. Okay, now we're gonna sew this and I'm going to give myself some guides here. So I'm gonna fold this in four places and I'm just gonna nip at these folds here. And then I'm gonna do this. There's already a notch there. And then if I put this seam on top of that notch there, I will have another one. And another one just like that. All right, so now I'll put these little nips right there. Okay, and you're gonna need to leave an opening for the stuffing or the weight. This is one time where you kind of want to be accurate on your seam allowance to get around because anytime you're sewing a circle to the bottom of something, circles are pretty problematic that way. I had a pro product once with a circle as the bottom and eventually I changed it because it just was too fussy, you know, so. All right, so I'm gonna Go a little bit further like that. Do I think my, my funnel will fit in there? Yeah, it will. All right, so now we're going to turn this right side out. Do I wanna trim anything? Maybe I'll trim this little corner. I think I'm gonna clip into my curve. You know, I don't wanna find out later that I should have before I turned it. So let's clip into the curve. I don't know if I'll clip into the curve at the opening that I left. A little scissor ASMR clipping for you. <laughs> All right, let's turn this right side out. Oof, these little fussy things. Not my favorite. Okay, let's pull on that. And now I'm gonna press with my finger along this rounded seam really firmly. I can't really get in there with an iron. I'm glad I clipped the curve. Oh, this thing looks smaller than I realized. Okay, I'm gonna put this in here. Can we get it in there? Please, please. Yeah, I think we did. Okay, I think I can. Yeah, all right. Oh, let's do it over the tray. Thank goodness I have a tray here. <laughs> let's try it out. I feel like this is gonna be a disaster. This is, I, th I thought I'd use more of these, but I guess not. I got it for a pin cushion. Okay, let's stop there. Trying to get the stuff in there everywhere. I'm gonna add a little bit more. So as I pull out this cone, it'll fill up hopefully. Oof, oof, okay, I overshot that. That's okay though. I'm gonna shove these in there because there's room. Okay, that works. Hmm, these smell good. Upside down bird. <laughs> we'll just call it a toey. <laughs> My husband would appreciate that joke. <laughs> All right, um, let's get this edge somewhat turned. Let me get my thread. That stuff's kind of dusty. Let me get a needle. This one? No, I don't like that one. Here, this one. Mm. This one. Okay. I'm not a very good hand sewer. Y'all know that, right? Okay. 
and well that's way too long. We could do four strands. Nah, we won't do four strands. Okay. Here's my little tip. When you time your hand sewing and you need two strands, fold it in half and leave the loop at this end here and then put the two cut ends through the eye of the needle like this. All right. And now your first pass, you can do a little loop, um, like a um, slip knot. So I'm just gonna go into the seam allowance here like this. Oh, I went, that's that. I thought this was part of my thread. So let's get rid of that. Start again here. So it's shorter than I think. There it is. Okay, so then I just go through that little loop like that, and now I'm ready. So I'm gonna, I, do I, I think I wanna be at the other end, but oh well. We'll go like this. We'll just flip it over. <laughs> but I wanna be right up here. It could be stuffed a little better. I'm gonna try and get this lined up mostly on the seam line. I think drawing your seam allowances where the opening is might be a little helpful if you're like me and not the best hand sewer. You know what I mean, jelly beans? So, okay. This is not ASMR, is it? But I bet it's enjoyable to watch me struggle. <laughs> I really need to get a thimble. This is one you wish I could speed up too. I'd say let's do our Santa letter, but there's no way I'm, I'm gonna take a chance and jinx us without the, the uh, antler ears, you know? and writing it out, but let's think about one right now. Let's see. I can probably move a lot of this. It's got candy out. So I got these Starburst um, candy canes recently and I haven't even had one yet. <laughs> I keep forgetting, I'm like, I can't eat that on camera. That's too big. The one thing I saw was, I was like, ooh, all these flavored candy canes look really fun. But so many of them had a cherry flavor and I was like, no, I'm sorry. I don't need a cough syrup flavored anything. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I got this one. This is lemon. Ooh, lemon, strawberry, and watermelon, or lemon. No, no, it's not watermelon. Um, because the other ones that had the watermelon, because watermelon is one of my favorite things, um, <clears throat> they all had cherry with them. So, yeah, that's a deal breaker. I think it's strawberry. It's not cherry. <laughs> That's all I know is it's not cherry. We're getting there. This is definitely a labor of love. One time I had this friend, she made me these little um, um, like coasters. And they were these little tiny quilts, kind of scrappy. All the same fabrics though for all four, so they looked cohesive. And then she hand stitched a tiny little drink on each one, you know, like like a little soda with bubbles or a little martini glass or whatever. Um, I'm actually not in, like in touch with that person anymore, but I still use those little coasters and I, Think about how, <laughs> what a nice little gift they were, even though it was just four little coasters, maybe it was six, and they are, you know, scrappy quilted, salt on the back, sewing isn't her main thing at all, um, and um, then the little, you know, and it was all in like these blues and oranges, which was really cool, and then the little stitching was always on a strip of solid, and that little tiny drink, like it's a little tiny drink, I know how fussy that little project must have been for four little coasters, you know? And it's always these little things that are just so much fussier than anything else. 
you know? I mean, look at the oven mitt we just made the other day, right? Or yesterday, it wasn't that, that was just yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> Feels like a long time ago. All right, so now I'm just, I'm just kind of poking my needle in there to kind of get my thread seated. Oh, this feels very good. Oh, we could make these look like Hershey Kisses without the upside down bird. <laughs> feels good though. It's cute. Very cute. What other shapes? You, you could make this look like, a, look like a little mountain. That'd be kind of cute. And you could put a little flag coming out the mountain. I don't know. There's some potential with this. This is pretty cute. <laughs> All right, let's put my needle away. Our little upside down bird. Pretty sad about the upside down bird though. When some you lose them, right? Okay. Time. Let's figure out what this is. I know these are lemon and lime, which is actually kind of exciting. And then look, I got peppermint spoons for like a hot cocoa. Um, and I'm, I got this actually for ice cream. Do you like peppermint ice cream? Like with the, like the broken peppermint candy in it. I like vanilla ice cream with just peppermint candy in it. And you can sprinkle some chocolate chips or like hot cocoa powder on top. Very good. Oh, that made a snap when the plastic opened. That's good. What is that? What's a red starburst? Strawberry? Okay. I feel like we have extra luck with the candy. Dear Santa, what do we want to ask for today? Dear Santa, please help us support our local fabric stores. Okay, the reason I'm saying this is because I saw someone complaining about buying something from a big box fabric store. And they, in the United States, it's um, Joanne's fabric store. And um, uh, another big thing that happened here recently was this really big fabric retailer owned by Amazon went out of business. And so, some people are like, yay. Other people are like, no, right? There's like reasons for all of it. <clears throat> and this person was kind of like, you know, this stuff, this flannel's cheap, it pills, it's not that great. It, it's kind of, it's kind of crooked, blah, blah, blah. The person didn't even know much about sewing and fabric. I can't wait for them to go out of business. And I was like, no, no, we don't want a Joanne's to go out of, fab out of business. Cause here's the thing. Our local fabric stores have been hurt so badly by places like Joann's, right? They've been hurt so badly that now they don't even sell certain things because they just can't afford to compete against a big store like Joann's to sell things, right? People go there to buy the expensive things and notions and things like that. And that's why your local fabric store doesn't have everything, right? Because you're going to save up or someone's going to save up, use their 40% off coupon and buy it at Joann's. What we want is them to keep doing that, right? Fine. But we want our local fabric stores to keep buying good quality fabric so that we have that option because we'll never have it at Joanne Fabrics. I mean, there is some good stuff there probably, like, you know, there's some options. And plus, Joanne's, Joanne's is such a great, like, um, it's like the only option in a lot of places, right? It's the only option people have and it's accessible. People who are learning to sew or, or young people learning to sew, it gives them a lot more options because they can afford it there. There's everything in one place. It's, it's, a, it's a crucial part now of our sewing economy. And um, for better or worse, you know, and, and a lot of local fabric stores don't cater to garment sewists and neither does Joann's, right? So we need those local fabric stores to keep sewing um, our garment fabrics. We need to keep buying our garment fabrics from local fabric stores. And then fine, get the things your local fabric store doesn't carry at Joann's, right? So that's my little rant today. I, I am definitely guilty of going, oh, I'd rather buy muslin from Joann Fabrics or inter a bolt of interfacing because I can buy a whole bolt, like things like that where I can buy a whole bolt or rotary blades or something like that from a place like Joann's. But I'll tell you what, 
I buy ray rayon and linen and flannel and all those other things from a multitude of other fabric stores. And I'm really thankful I have both those options. And I'm really thankful that if I'm in a pinch and the local fabric store here, which is caters mostly to quilters, um, doesn't have what I need, I could go to a Joann's if I needed it the same day, right? So please help us support our local fabric stores. Please keep it just like that. Like if we can just keep it just like that, it's fine, right? Everybody has a little bit of everything. <laughs> All right, XO Sarah me. All right, I wanna enjoy this candy. My mouth's watering for it. This <laughs> is so bad. <laughs> All right, you guys, thanks for coming. And um, may none of your birds be upside down ever, unless it's a towie. And if you know what a towie is, you'll know why. So I'll see you tomorrow.